welcome to The Solve Network. I'm Shane Borza, host of the podcast. Along with my co-founder, Benjamin Goss, we'd like to welcome you. Our mission is to provide solutions and create a network of experts for you to learn from. We hope this episode and expert helps you to learn, grow, and move forward. And now, on with the show. Scene one, Apple, take one. Hi, I'm Shane Borza, your content creator coach. I have two books on filmmaking, Film Notes, where you learn to write, direct, and produce, and the Film Notes Workbook, where you can learn checklists and paperwork to streamline creating your content. Available at shaneborza.com. I also have filmmaker resources like the Paperwork Bundle with over 300 documents, the Sound Effects Bundle with almost 3,000 files, and the Music Bundle featuring 900 tracks of all genres. Want to build your professional credits? Become an associate producer and get listed on IMDb. Let me help you get your art out into the world. Scene one, Apple, take one. When you were talking about that 30 minute kind of transition period, I'm like, oh, that sounds Mm -hmm. like a great way to move from the busyness of the day to kind of transition and prepare yourself for like restful sleep. Is that any connection there to that? You know, that's a great analogy, right? In terms of what you're bringing up, Shane, because I never thought of it that way. The way that it was taught to me by Dr. Levery is really, um, you're using the theta period in terms of the brainwave period where uh, you are right before sleep. And also the first thing before you, you know, after you wake up is to basically the most potent time in terms of accessing your subconscious to reprogram the frontal lobe. Yeah. And it's really reprogramming the brain so that whatever is written here before, it's going to be erased, right? And whatever you choose to manifest now, you're going to rewrite it here. So literally taking control of your own destiny to rewrite your own path in terms of creating and manifesting and all that. So it's a powerful time for creation when we can harness that and understand, you know, how to use it. Uh, but I definitely can resonate. Wow. Okay. It's definitely a transition time because every little sleep is like a little death, right? And every single morning it's a reincarnation for us. And so how powerful is that to be able to enter into it, this phase, you know, consciously and be creating what we are choosing rather than be reactive to, okay, I watch so much social media and it's all raw emotion. And he talked about this, right? Uh, how healthy our mind is right now has to do with how healthy you're feeding it, the kind of emotional diet that you're feeding it. So if you want a healthy mind, you have to control and be very discerning in terms of the, uh, the emotional input. And with everything that's out there right now, it's completely unprocessed. And so how healthy could that possibly be for any one of us? So when we wanna shift something physically, we change our physical diet. When we wanna change something in our headspace, it has to be taking care of that emotional diet. So high vibrational, you know, emotional food. Uh, for me, you know, it's definitely the nam because it is sacred sound and these have been around for thousands of years. So it's aligning my entire soul in terms of with this divine vibration. And it's really for service. Ultimately, that's what it's for. You went over a few different breath exercises and different uh, sound exercises. You talked about the navel. If you were going to recommend a single practice that maybe is the most applicable to the most amount of people or would have the biggest impact, what would you say that would be? Out of all the ones that we suggested today, I would say probably the Royal Kriya where you're wrapping all five fingers on one hand and then going to the other hand, okay? You literally, you know, can heal anything with just this practice alone in 30 minutes in a day, okay? And then at the same time, combining that with, uh, with the reprogram of the frontal lobe, if you're listening to the Hue Tract, that has been the most transformative for me, Shane, in the last three months of doing this practice. And I would say second to that would be the three-point breath, which is the 555, eventually working up 20, 20, 20. And when you can take one breath a minute, okay, 20 seconds inhale, 20 seconds hold the breath, 
20 seconds exhale. I know I struggle with that. So that's why I recommend five, five, five in the beginning. And that's enough to drop the breath rate down to four breaths a minute. And then eventually increase that capacity, you know, to 20, 20, 20. And it basically allows you to take full control of that emotional landscape so that there is zero reactivity. And who wouldn't want that, right? Instead of staying in the basement in terms of your life and being reactive to stuff and being the victim of life, you now have the elevator button to go up to the seventh floor. And if you choose to, you can stay there. And the, the view is absolutely very completely different. And so uh, that's something that I teach my clients to do in terms of in the healing aspect of things. And it's just a simple tool that they can use throughout the day to do that. I'd forgotten all about this, but when I was studying Aikido, my, I, I did Deshi in my sensei was having us, because when you do Deshi, it's like if you're a full-time student, so you're doing, <laughs> you're at the dojo yeah. for like 12 <laughs> hours a day, every day. I and stuff, yeah. we would have, uh, you know, meditation time and breathing time and training time and cleaning time and everything else. And, and one of the things mm -hmm. that our sensei led us through is, it was like a half hour of breathing. And we shifted from, so we started breathing just whatever we were doing and we increased our breathing rate so that we were like, you know, panting, you know, almost that like, mm -hmm. yep. 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 and then yep. we slowed all the way back down so that we were breathing like two breaths a minute or something. And mm -hmm. it was profound. And I'm, I'm curious if you have any experience with doing almost like a pyramid with breath of, you know, either starting slow and speeding up and slowing back down again or vice versa. Is there, is there anything to that? Yeah, so it has to do with, in terms of how I look at it, Shane, it's it's the uh, harmonizing of the fire element and the water element, right, in terms of creation. So I want to have a balance of that. And so I could see the wisdom in terms of the master in, in combining the two. And the same thing with, with the non-practice as well. When you're flowing through the practice, there will be moments where it's fiery, and then you're going to balance and harmonize that with the water element. So that at the end of it, you know, when fire and water comes together, and that's your truth. Well, actually, the fire element stands for wisdom. And then the water element stands for love, right? In terms of divine love. When you combine those two together, what do you get? You get hot water. <laughs> and I know I talked about hot water quite a bit. It's, it's the simplest, simplest tool to navigate COVID in a sense that it changes the internal terrain. And so the viral elements have a hard time multiplying. Um, but the result in terms of spiritually speaking, it's truth. And what does truth do? Truth sets you free, right? The simple, simple thing like that. So balancing of the water and, and fire elements are definitely important. And yeah, ultimately it is coming to a place of freedom with that. And the freedom really comes from the space of neutrality um, where you're completely the you're living from your self and that higher space of uh, your being. Wanted to get more clarity about the two minute reset. So if someone was starting to do it, what would you ask them to pay attention to and how do they know when things are changing? Is it, is the goal to have it take two minutes? Is the goal to have the reaction happen quickly? Is shifting from it, starting slow and moving to faster, uh, an improvement, you know, some of that I don't know the answers to. Yeah. So Stanley Rosenberg's book, accessing the healing power of the vagus nerve, you can get off of Amazon for about 20 bucks and anyone can learn this. And that's one of the reasons why I love his work because it gives you the power, you know, and the exercise is so simple, but all the, uh, physiological things that are happening because the vagus nerve innervates the front of the body, right? Your ocular muscles are tied to that. It also innervates your C1 and C2. So as you're doing that exercise, what happens is that you're literally giving yourself the self-adjustment of your atlas and your axis. And those two bones, when we're in fight, flight, freeze, you know, always gets out of alignment. And people who have neck problems today, you know, and carry the head forward, I used to do that. Um, it's because of that, you know, it's, it's an unhealthy nervous system. And so it puts the body out of alignment. 
So when we can have a simple tool like that to basically reset, and just to go back to answering your questions, Shane, is um, I use it as a gauge now to basically observe myself, right? I knew how hard it was in the beginning for me to do the reset. It took me more than five minutes to get into it. And it felt super uncomfortable in my body because I didn't even know what a healthy nervous system felt like inside of myself, right? For multiple decades. And I was 50 years old, you know, when that happened. And it's like, wow, you know, for for probably 40 some years of my life, I never even had a healthy nervous system. Probably never did, you know, even from womb, because your mom's biochemistry in terms of how she felt during pregnancy passes down to you in terms of the genetic imprint because of epigenetics. Um, and so I inherited that from the womb. I inherited her nervous system. I inherited my dad's nervous system uh, and the whole entire lineage, you know, and past life stuff as well as this life stuff. Uh, so it's a lot of things that it's, it's actually correcting. Um, so when you can have a simple conscious tool like that, that you can basically tap into your only healing mode in your entire autonomic system, which is essentially the bridge between you in the physical world, right? And the astral world, because the astral plane is where emotions actually live, right? In terms of how that rules. Um, and so, um, yeah, how fast you can get into it is certainly what I look at, you know, the, the, the more that I did this and the more that I created a healthy bridge in terms of, okay, now I can basically go into healthy nervous system much faster. It gave me a clue into my healing process as well. And as that wire that you're creating or that groove in the brain that you're actually creating, um, gets deeper and deeper, you're going to get into it much faster. And that also is an indicator of health as well. So yeah, you can tell, you know, where you are, you know, by yourself in terms of, okay, my nervous system today is really off. I better take care of myself now. Yeah. And um, also help other people as well, because it's something that's very easy to teach somebody else. And you can literally get someone out of the state of uh, fight, flight, freeze in anxiety or depression or whatnot into a healthy space with themselves. So my challenge to a lot of my clients is, do that every hour on the hour, if you can, okay? Take a sip of hot water and do that and um, see what happens. Well, you're reading my mind. I was going to ask because I, I know that Joyce does that every hour and mm -hmm. whether it's, it's the reset or the, the breathing, would you suggest that more is better or is it uh, each thing has a, you know, maybe there's a different recommendation? Well, uh, the caveat of this practice, right, in terms of uh, how thoughts control how we feel and then how it impacts the physiology is one negative thought will throw that C1, C2 out of alignment. And that's pretty, that's pretty crucial, right, when you understand that. So how quick can you think a negative thought? And can you guarantee that throughout that hour, you're not going to have a single negative thought? I can't guarantee that, you know? So the safety really is at least every single hour, give yourself two minutes to self-heal, you know, to put yourself back into a healthy nervous system and take care of yourself, care of the people around you. Because when you are well, then you can contribute. When you're not well, then, you know, it's, it's harder on everyone else. So the best way that we can take care and protect other people is actually to take care of ourselves, to stay healthy. Can you talk more about NAM as an organization and what else they do or how, if anyone's interested, where they can go to find out more about it? Yeah, so uh, NAM, L-A.com, N-A-A-M as in Mary, L-A.com. The uh, resource site is actually rootlight.com, R-O-O-T-L-I-G-H-T. And it was an organization that was founded by Dr. Levery. Um, and he basically merged uh, Eastern and Western esoteric practices and then also with sacred sound. So the Eastern part is actually the Struksma Vyayam, which is the root of ancient medicinal yoga. So that ancient form of practice is actually energetic, kind of like, you know, you're looking at Kung Fu, right? So that's the physical practice. However, the highest form of that practice is not a physical form. It's actually energetic and qigong and the, 
uh, medicinal qigong that happens in terms of with self-healing. And so the same thing with Shuksma Viyayam, the highest form of all yogas. In fact, the root of all yoga is actually energetic because it heals the energy body, right? And then we in the Western world has so physicalized that practice that today you see, you know, the, the, all these different poses, but ultimately the practice is not about the physical practice. It's about the energetic healing that you can create on your own um, in terms of with these very ancient practices. So the Shuksma Viyayam is the root. And what the yogis used to use this form of yoga for is when they would go into deep states of samadhi, sometimes for months on end, when they come out of it, right? They would use the Shuksma to basically regenerate and rejuvenate. So that was what it was for. It was used for healing. Um, and then the Western branch of it is universal holistic understandings of the laws of the universe. So how do you navigate the 99% of the universe that's unseen? Our thoughts are unseen. The breath we breathe is unseen. Our feelings are completely unseen. What we get to perceive with the five senses is only 1% of the universe, right? So what we don't see is what's going to hurt us. There are forces, unseen forces of nature that are working all the time, 24 seven. And you understand that and know how to map that out, then you can avoid obstacles. And then you can take you know, full advantage of opportunities as well when they come along. Um, so those are just some universal tools that you can use in terms of that piece. And then the central piece is really the nam, that sacred sound. And you know, if you understand that the universe is created from sound, right? from ohm itself in terms of that original primal sound, then when we understand that everything is vibration, including the physicality of things, it's just condensed sunlight, then when we can manage that vibration and know how to navigate that terrain, it's a powerful tool. So it's ultimately coming into full alignment with the divine to live as that divine embodiment on this earth in this lifetime is the greatest gift of any human. It's really great that you're talking about things like sacred sound and the whole time there are these birds chirping behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. Tisha mentioned the same thing. I'm in the middle of six, you know, six acres of rainforest uh, on the big island and very grateful to be here. Um, yeah. Absolutely, to be surrounded by nature and looking in the green rainforest all the time. It's a blessing. Now, we, we know each other, so you, you know this about me and I know this about you, but can you talk about how immersing yourself in nature or getting into kind of a natural environments can help with some of these things and, and or, you know, regardless whether it's the sacred sounds or the breathing, uh, mm -hmm. or even if it's just grounding or, you know, uh, natural light, how those can have an effect on our health. Yeah. So the level of health, um, or the quality of your health has to do with the level of prana in the body, right? So prana, chi is really essentially to me the same thing. Um, and so where are those sources coming from? From sun? Yeah. From nature, from our food, from our water, so the more that we can basically have high quality pranic uh, infusion in terms of that diet, obviously it's going to impact health. Now, the things that deplete it would be anything that's negative, like negative emotions of anger, negative emotions of worry, anxiety, and all that uh, depletes your life force. So when you equate that, you know, in terms of prana with life force and you're kind of like, you know, then you can basically increase that level for increased quality of health and also vitality. Um, and that's why the ancients imbib, you know, sunlight and they're in nature all the time and um, breathing in fresh air, you know, eating high quality food. And we know all these things impact us, right? How? It's really down to the essence of life itself, which is the life force that you're taking into the body. And it's that singular unit of uh, divine intelligence itself that the body is trying to extract and it knows how to do that you just have to give it a chance you know um, so being in nature is huge I spend probably 95 percent of my day outdoors and I can say this the only time I go inside is actually when I when I you know prepare food and eat that 
um, uh, out, you know, other than that, uh, yeah, I'm out here wanting to see how the elements are in terms of the stars, the way they move, you know, all the heavenly bodies and, and just being immersed in nature, being sunshine and uh, walking on the grass, you know, barefoot and whatnot uh, to soak up the prana from the earth itself and from the environment. I'm curious to learn more about your journey. Can you talk about mm -hmm. where you have, have gone with healing or, or where you went from to where you are now and where you want to go? Yeah. You know, that's such a big question, right, Shane? So I come from this conventional medical training background, right? And, and the heart was really what makes me happiest as a kid was I get to help people, right? And so I got into nursing thinking that, wow, I'm going to really enjoy this field. But what I realized being in the conventional medical field was that I couldn't find my alignment there because um, I'm about, my heart is about things that work that don't cause side effects for people. And so uh, literally needed to jump out of that box and find my own way in terms of in the alternative healing arena. And so that's been my journey. And, and you mentioned earlier, it's a validation of modalities. And that's really been uh, what I love to look at is, is the potency of something, because I don't want to waste my time, your time, anybody's time, because time is short, right? Life is short. And so in that process, in that journey, it was coming from a place of using a lot of external modalities. And I was getting frustrated because clients were getting uh, dependent on these modalities and ultimately coming to this most recent evolution within myself of understanding, wow, in order for them to keep and own what they create, they need to create it themselves. Yeah, from the inside out. So permanent healing really for, for people to own that, they have to create it themselves. And so I'm literally just a Sherpa in terms of um, as a guide uh, and then facilitating uh, the learning of these tools, these simple tools that anyone can have access to uh, that's available and they can, they can learn on their own to basically master themselves over time. Yeah. So that's been kind of in a nutshell what my journey has been in terms of where I'm going. Well, you know, it's... Um, the term yoga, right? The term yoga is about the union with the divine. And, and that's where I'm going, or that's where what is happening in terms of this internal um, evolvement or transformation within myself. Uh, that's definitely my number one priority. And ultimately it is for service because when I can be at the divine to serve on this planet earth in this lifetime, it's the biggest, greatest blessing for myself and for anyone that comes into my sphere of influence because, because there would be no limitation. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah. Well, I've been asking a lot of questions. So I want to open it up to the group and see if anyone else has any thoughts or comments on anything we've been talking about. Okay. Feel free that to just good. jump in. So Grace, what does it look like for folks that work with you? Do you, work with people one-on-one -on, -one on a weekly basis? Um, who is your kind of typical client, ideal client? Um, and what kind of outcomes do, are they typically seeking and, and receiving? Yeah, so James, great question. Um, I do one-on-ones for sure on a weekly basis with clients and uh, it's really working through ultimately dissolving that body of pain, right? Because the body of pain is really what is creating all this disharmony, all this disease uh, within the being itself. And so uh, from that space, it's for them to have these tools, these powerful tools, simple but powerful tools to be able to neutralize that and be able to create uh, a body of health from that. Um, I'm also doing some groups in terms of facilitating mentoring through groups as well, uh, where people can learn these permanent healing principles uh, for health and wealth as well. Um, and um, yeah, and I think I think I got your your question answered, right? Yeah, that was helpful. Also, just a uh, uh, curiosity. Oh, I mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and so I have one more question there. Uh, this style of yoga, the Nam yoga, it seems yes. to be more focused. It's less about like the kind of 3D full body postures and more mm -hmm. about um, 
healing modalities that are more like mudra based and breath based than um, what I guess would fall under the Hatha yoga uh, umbrella. Is that fair? Yeah. So the Hatha, which is the body, right? The physicality part of the practice, you know, that's important too. Uh, and there are elements of that in within Nam itself, uh, but it's a small part of it. It's probably 10% of the practice, the mantra or the mantric path or the sound, uh, sacred sound is a huge part. And then also obviously the mudras, because you're working with the meridians, you're working with the energy body, um, and the breath is huge as well. So um, I would say 10% uh, hatha, and then the rest of it is really uh, that aligning of your being energetically with the divine through sound, through breath, um, and through micro movement. Um, and then in terms of just circling back to answering your uh, question on the clients, the best people who work with me are people who are willing to do the work themselves because I'm literally just a guide. They do 90% of the heavy lifting. And so it has to come from a place of self-initiative where they are willing to change and looking for that, right? It's not about popping a pill. It's definitely not that. It's people who are ready for this work in terms of um, self-mastery and really wanting some potent tools around that for creating permanent self-healing. So it's awesome. it's not your yeah it's not your conventional person it's definitely uh, someone who's been looking for this. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grace, this is Tisha. Hey, Tisha. Hey there. With regard to frequency, yeah. Once once someone does these breathing. Uh, exercises and and some of the, the the few things that you've taught us today how often yeah. should this be done so at least in the morning uh one time i would say that would be the minimum uh and then if you can do an evening time because there are tides in the day right in terms of high pranic flow and then low kind of like the oceans right there's also a pranic ocean in terms of from six to twelve to six to 12. Those are the four uh, points in terms of transition points or twilight zones. But you wanna capture the most potent time, which is between four and seven in the morning, and then four and seven in the afternoon. So high tide in the morning and low tide in the afternoon. So when you can use that time to basically align and clock yourself with the universe, it's a powerful healing time. And uh, Dr. Levery was talking about this past weekend, right? When you wake up between those times and as mystics, right? They tend to work during those times because they're, they're the most powerful times of the day in terms of between probably around, uh, well, waking up between three or four in the morning. And that's how I've been waking up. And then having those three hours to myself in terms of meditation, in terms of reprogram or whatnot uh, with the sound. And then again, meditating in the evening time. And then if you want to cap to, you know, capture like the noon time in terms of the mid be a very potent time because the tides are just shifting from high to low. So there's this twilight zone. Yeah. In terms of that little space, in terms of the, the 20 to 40 minutes between the shifts that you can take advantage of to pray for yourself and then also pray for others. And when I say others, it could be our planet. Yeah. Great question, by the way, Tisha. So thank you. Yeah, I have one more. Yeah. Um, so so say people may not be able to um, do a one on one. Are, is there a, a course available or some other additional way to get this information from you? Yeah, so I am actually going to be on Clubhouse on the 15th of March, uh, 11 o'clock Pacific time. Um, and for four Mondays, we're going to go in there and have conversations like this where we're talking about, uh, you know, these practices that people can basically take advantage of. And then from there, we're going to basically start some groups, um, some private mentoring groups that people can get into. So that would be an easy way to access these types of teachings with me. Uh, the other way is actually to use, you know, the, um, global platform of NAM itself. So it's N-A-A-M. If you Google that, uh, Dr. Levery's, uh, Instagram handle is D-R dot L-E-V-R-Y. He's got a ton of resources on there. In fact, I'm recommending watching that 30 minute talk that he did on Instagram, 
uh, that he put on a few posts ago and where he gives the entire formula of taking control of your physiology, right? How do you do that? How do you take full control of your biorhythm and so that you can basically take control of your frontal lobe? Um, and also talking about uh, creating divine blessings in terms of divine wealth. Um, so that's one resource. He also has a YouTube channel, same handle, dr.lebry, uh, rootlight.com, R-O-O-T-L-I-G-H-T is the NAM resource. And then uh, namla.com is another one that you can basically hook on to um, daily classes that basically you can live stream and also uh, go on subscription with them in terms of uh, replays or whatnot. The classes and certifications for NAM are all through that site. So uh, it's a huge resource for the world. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tishta. I just recently joined Clubhouse, but I haven't actually used it. So for people that aren't familiar with it, can you talk about, I know you said you're going to have be having some talks, but can you explain how it works and how they can interact? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, something they just listen to like a podcast or is it like a live call like this where they can interact? Yeah. So it's basically a conversation, you know, it's a dynamic platform where uh, if you are an Apple user, you do need to have an iPhone or some kind of an iDevice device because you can basically download the app from the app store itself um, and then jump on to conversations. Uh, so the title of the talk is actually conscious wellness decreasing anxiety. And it's going to be under my name, Grace Chang, also under Sharon Jean Land and under Jill Wolski will be the three people that will be uh, basically facilitating that conversation. It's allowing folks to basically who are interested in this sort of thing to join in that conversation and learn more. And uh, yeah, just ask their questions or whatnot. Um, and then from there, then it's really uh, getting into more um, uh, kind of a, a group session where then we can, uh, yeah, talk deeper in terms of doing deeper dives. So I, I wanted to ask another thing that may seem disconnected. Yeah. I mean, you were talking about the position where you put your thumbs inside your hands like this. Mm -hmm. The thing yeah. that immediately popped up is in weightlifting, they call this the hook grip. And mm -hmm. most people, when they do like a deadlift or some kind of weight and it's really heavy, they're gonna wrap their thumbs on the outside of their fingers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, in, in climbing, they do this as well. They call it a, a wrap grip. And so you'll, mm -hmm. you'll be on a hold and you'll put your thumb over top to help pull down on your finger. Mm -hmm. But in both coaches, especially lifting coaches talk about, it's much stronger to have all of your fingers holding one thumb than mm -hmm. it is to have one thumb trying to hold all of your fingers. And so it's much uh, a stronger and a more stable grip. But one of the things that most athletes complain about is it's painful and a lot of people aren't flexible <laughs> enough to hold their thumb. So they have to learn how to change the way their hand like works. And uh, more so than the amount of weight that they're using, it's how they hold their hand. It's almost like that's the skill to learn. And so I have, I just can't stop thinking about how <laughs> you were talking about these, you know, micro movements. And it's like, yeah. you have these big, strong people picking up lots of weight. That's not the problem. <laughs> the problem is moving their thumb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's a good gauge, right? Okay. Can you touch right underneath the pad of your pinky? Excellent. Okay. So that is a point where this is an anti-aging mudra. So if you don't want to age, this is the water point and you want to be able to touch that, right? It's also for fertility. This is a fertility uh, mudra as well. So if you just touch that and if you wrap the thumb and it hurts, it shows you, wow, something's happening with my lungs. It's my lung meridian, with my thumb. <laughs> so let's do something about it. So if you wrap it for a couple minutes, it probably will go away. So simple things like that. It's, a, it's, a, it's such a great uh, tool to be able to basically use as a gauge in terms of where you need to basically be paying attention to yourself. Yeah. But really great point, Shane. 
you're so right. You know, that's why these micro movements can be very challenging for people, like cross lateral motion, you know, in terms of stuff like this, right? Uh, that's so healthy for the brain that we are not taught to do. Um, and just uh, simple things in terms of how accessible the hands are in terms of our healing. Uh, and the 72,000 nerves that basically run through the navel down to the feet, you know, you can also heal a lot of stuff through the feet. There's nothing you can't heal when you can have access to your feet as well. And, and it makes sense. I mean, there's reflexology and all of these things yes. where, you know, ev everything mm -hmm. corresponds to multiple points or, or the whole yep. body, you know, it's a, uh, it's really interesting I do or have in the past gone to a lot of acupuncture and mm -hmm. people will, will the practitioners, because I, I go a lot, I'm familiar with it. And they'll, mm -hmm. they'll joke and they'll say, Oh, you know, people come in they're like my shoulder hurts. And then they'll be like, Oh, so, you know, if it's your right shoulder, I'm going to go down to like your left ankle, you know, because the X pattern yep. and the people are always like, what are you doing down there? It's not down there. It's up here. And then once the needles go in, they have this huge release and they're, so yeah, so quite often it is something that will correspond to something else, but we don't necessarily know that there's a connection there. So mm -hmm. I would I want to be mindful of everyone's time, but but I, I did want to ask you that last question is is there any kind of a kind of a connection or uh, something like oh the shoulders affected by the ankle, for instance, that was most surprising to you in in your studies or that most stood out to you? Yeah, I love that you're you're tying in with that because you know we do have nerves. The longest nerve that we have is actually the wandering one called the vagus nerve, and it's also our healing nerve, right? And it's one of our cranial nerves. And so, uh, of course, if you think about these neural pathways, right, all the way from the tip of the toe to the top of your head, it's all connected. And that's just talking about the physical part of you. What about the bridge to the astral part of you and also the mental divine part of you, which your thoughts live. And so uh, to basically have a way in terms of a system that teaches you how to navigate all those three planes of existence and be able to heal yourself from, from the mental divine plane so that things no longer manifest in the physical is a powerful thing. Um, and so... In the journey with Nam, the last three years for me has been uh, transformative to say the least. Uh, and uh, it's given me the tools to be able to say, wow, you know, I know how to do this. And it's, it's the game of transformation and uh, grateful to be able to uh, share all this stuff with you guys and uh, to learn together, to remember together. Well, before we wrap up, I'd love to have you share where people can connect with you, whether it's following what you're doing or if they want to message you or ask you any more questions and also give you a chance to spotlight anything else other than the Clubhouse talk that you have coming up or, or any resources you'd want to point people at. Yeah, so uh, can definitely connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, that's where I'm most active right now uh, in terms of just uh, reaching out to me. My contact info is on uh, the link itself. And, um, and in terms of things that I would like to highlight, it's really to ultimately be who you're meant to be on this planet. And uh, I realized today, Shane, that I actually love cultivation of souls. That's really my why you know it's like okay creating that springboard right for individual and collective transformation yes i talk about that uh and um it is bringing the platforms of wealth and health together in terms of permanent solutions for those because i can be the healthiest without resources is zero impact i can be the richest and most wealthy without health i'm dead in the water so those two pieces of the puzzle needs to come together and it's really knowing how to navigate your own internal terrain and to come into that neutral space with yourself. And in that space, then you are literally living as the divine itself to serve yourself and others. Yeah, very well said. Very well said. I like the creating health and wealth together. You're right. It's uh, 
par very parallel to what I, I talk about with it both having mind and body fitness. Yeah. I always say that, you know, if, if you got a uh, healthy thoughts and feelings, but your, your body isn't in good shape, then you're not going to be doing very well and vice versa. You know, if you're a wreck inside, but you, you look good, you're still not going to be, so it's, it's really the, the holistic. And so mm -hmm. I think that that is, is very, very wise. So thank you so much for everything that you taught us today. I'm really fascinated by the um, sacred sound. And so I'm going to be doing some more looking into that. So I encourage everyone, look up Nam, join Grace on her Clubhouse talk, and please join us on the next call. As a reminder, these are the first and third Thursday of every month. And if you do miss it, you can get on our mailing list and we will always ensure that we put out the audio and the video for you to get if you missed it. And always feel free to reach out to whoever the speaker is so you can connect with them and have them help you with whatever it is that they do. So thank you all and we'll see you on the next call. Good night, everyone. Aloha. Aloha. Good night, aloha. Thank you, Tisha. Thank you, Faith. Thank aloha. you, Ben. Thank you so thank much, you. Shane. Thank you, Ben. Aloha. Aloha. Hey, my name is James. I'm a lawyer who's always been interested in optimal human performance, and that's how I found Shane. If you're looking to upgrade your mental and physical fitness, then the Ultimate Performance Course is for you. It's the key to performing better at work, at home, and in all of life's challenges. I've also found it to be a great community of like-minded and supportive professionals. As Shane says, together, everyone accomplishes more. Want to have your ultimate performance or find out more about how to optimize your mind and body fitness? Contact me at shaneborza.com and see if the DIY or the group program would be best for you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Solve Network. These interviews are from our web series of the same name. Want to watch? Head over to YouTube and search for The Solve Network. If you have questions, you can reach out to me at shaneborza.com. On behalf of my co-founder, Benjamin Goss, we're glad you are a part of the network and hope you are finding solutions. If you need solutions, please reach out.